Shanti and uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. So today's Murli is 23rd of January 2024. And as usual, I have just touched up the translation to make it uh, smoother English and maybe a little bit more clarity. The essence, sweet children, Baba is a mountain of sweetness, and you children become sweet through remembering the sweet father and the sweet inheritance. Question, how do you make yourselves and everything you have safe? A lot of people are concerned about safety these days, security, uh, the world is becoming a little more dangerous every day. The answer, you say, Baba, I give you everything I have, including this worthless body, and in exchange, I will take everything from you in the future. This ensures your safety. You put everything in Baba's safe. This is Sheep Baba's safety deposit bank. So remain in Baba's safe and be imperishable. Imperishable means you won't get uh, killed or accident or something like that. You gain victory over death. So this is a very, very deep point, which will come in the Murli, and I'll take that up. By belonging to Shiv Baba, you remain safe. However, you must also strive to claim a high status. So you are protected by being with Baba. Everything you have and what you are is um, protected. Uh, but at the same time, you have to create your fortune. Om Shanti. The father asks you, can you see your most elevated, your purushottam faces of the future? Do you see your purushottam bodies? So everything is predestined in the drama, which includes your body as a deity. And when you spin the cycle, when you are um, able to make contact with the future as well as the past and the present, then maybe you can discern these things. At least in a general way, you can understand uh, the quality of face and body you will have. Do you understand that in future, you will be born into the dynasty of the new golden-aged world of Lakshmi and Narayan, the world of prosperity, and you will be most elevated beings. So one of the uh, def defining characteristics of a deity is Purushottam, which is the elevated being. Students remain aware of what they will become through their study. You know that you will take birth in the dynasty of Vishnu. Vishnu is the dual form of Lakshmi and Narayan. Your intelligence is now capable of processing alokic concepts, 
So alokic concept is a concept that has to do with the gyan, and you would not find this kind of concept in uh, worldly study. These concepts do not circulate in anyone else's understanding. You know that you are sitting in the company of the true father, Shiv Baba. The highest on high father is teaching you. He is the sweetest. Remember that sweetest father with much love, because he says, children, only by remembering me will you become Purushottam. So remembering Baba means getting into the same resonance as what he is, because this changes you. By imbibing the jewels of knowledge, you will be multi-millionaires for your next 21 births. The Father is giving you these blessings. The sweetest brides and sweetest competent children receive these blessings. The Father is pleased seeing the sweetest children. You know that all of you are playing your own parts in this play. Everyone has a fixed role. Some good, some bad, some this, some that. Whatever is your part, you play. Somebody else plays their part. The unlimited father is also playing his part of appearing personally in front of you in this unlimited drama. You, sweet children of the sweet father, are actually able to see the sweetest father. So Shiv Baba speaks through the body of Brahma Baba so you can see him through the facial expressions uh, because the soul is reflected in the face. So you can see who's talking to you. Souls see one another through their sense organs. You are the sweet children. The Father has intentionally come to make you children sweet. Lakshmi and Narayan are the sweetest, and their kingdom is also sweet. Their subjects are sweet. So this word sweet is the opposite of bitter. So when anything is... Um, bad, unpleasant, cruel, harmful, that's called bitter. So the opposite of all those things that you get in this world will not be there. When you go to temples, you experience their images to be so sweet, the images of the deities. You desire to have a look at the images of the sweet deities as soon as the temple opens. Those who contemplate them understand that they were the masters of sweet heaven. Many people go to Shiva temples because he, Shiva, is the sweetest of all. People praise sweetest Sheep Baba a great deal and you too must become most sweet. The sweetest father is personally sitting before you children. He is incognito, invisible. Eh? No one else can be as sweet as he. The father is like a mountain of sweetness. The sweet father comes into this bitter world and makes it sweet. You children know that the sweetest father is making you the sweetest of all. He is making us as he is. An individual influences others to become like themselves. So, to become such sweet ones, accept the influence of the sweet father and 
the sweet inheritance. Baba repeatedly tells you, consider that you are bodiless and remember me. I promise you that all your sorrow and suffering will be removed through this. You will become ever healthy and ever wealthy. You will become the sweetest. When your souls become sweet, you will also take sweet bodies. You should be ecstatic knowing that you are the children, the direct children of the most beloved father. And that being the case, you must follow Baba Srimad. Sweetest Baba is making us extremely sweet. The Most Beloved Father says, let jewels continue to emerge from your mouths. Do not let bitter stones fall from your lips. The sweeter you become, the more you will glorify the Father's name. As you follow the Father, others will follow you. Baba is also your teacher and would definitely give you teachings. Just as businessmen check their accounts every night, keep your daily chart of remembrance because you, businessmen, are doing big business with the Father. The more you remember the Father, the more limitless prosperity you will attain from the Father. How does this work? Remembrance intensifies your relationship. And when your relationship is total, then what you get from him is also total. So this is how it increases. You will become Sato Pradhan. Check yourselves every day. Narad was told to look at his face in a mirror to see whether he was honorable enough to marry Lakshmi. So you too have to see whether you are honorable like these deities. Check if you have character defects because you children need perfect integrity. The Father has come to make you complete. So check yourselves rigorously to see if you have any character weaknesses which would prevent you from enjoying a high status. The Father continues to provide you with methods to be free from negative compulsions. The Father is looking at all of you souls, and when he sees the weaknesses of some, he gives them a current to remove any obstacles. Now this current, this is um, Sakash, is drishti, and this current Baba would give uh, to uh, certain of his children who would be experiencing some difficulties or he would see there's some problem. So he would send this energy, which is also sometimes called shaktipat, and uh, that gives them the strength to um, deal with their situation in the best possible way. The more you do what the Father is asking and remain aware of who he is, the more your negative compulsions will leave and you will remain prosperous. So when you act on negative compulsions, you do a wrong action which puts you into loss. So when you resist that, you remain prosperous. Check yourselves meticulously. Did I harm anyone in my thoughts, words, or deeds? As detached observers, check your behavior. Obviously, you are aware of the behavior of others, but first, look at yourself. When you criticize others, you forget to critique yourself. 
Each of you must serve yourselves. To serve others means to serve yourself. You're benefiting yourself when you serve others. You are not serving Sheep Baba. He doesn't need anything. Sheep Baba himself has come to serve. You Brahmins are valuable and you are sitting safely in Sheep Baba's bank. You become indestructible by staying in Baba's safe. So that's Baba's safe means you're surrounded by Baba's, you know, walls of protection, canopy of protection. You're in the um, environment, surrounded by other Brahmins, and you're with Baba in your mind. So um, and external influences will not be able to take you away, that kind of thing. You are gaining victory over death. So there's two kinds of death. One is physical death, and then the other is you die from Baba, you leave uh, because of some Maya or some other person's influence. Now that you belong to Shi Baba, you have become safe. At the same time, you must strive to claim a high status. Another aspect of safety is that um, it's this uh, tug of war between the influence of your Lokic family and the influence of Baba and the Alokic family. So the Lokic family wants you, wants you to get into the uh, karma of the social systems that you're born into, uh, which makes you not follow all the practices of a Brahmin and gets you into karmic accounts and you go away from Baba. So in that sense, you um, uh, you are protected from that by being with Baba. All the wealth and prosperity of the people in the world will be destroyed. Nothing will remain. You children now own nothing, not even your own bodies. Give them to the Father. So you become trustees, everything you are, everything you have, you give it over to God, and uh, then he gives you the return in the next 21 births. So it is as though those who have nothing have everything. You have made a deal with the unlimited father, which will come to fruition in the future new world. You say, Baba, I give you everything I have, including this body worth only straw. And in exchange, I will take everything from you there. This means you have become safe and everything of yours is safe in Baba's safe. So when you put yourself and everything you have into the Yagya, it's a method for transferring everything from the Iron Age to the Golden Age with plenty of interest. You children should be ecstatic because there is very little time before you go to your kingdom. If anyone asks you, tell them we are claiming our inheritance of unlimited prosperity from the unlimited father. We are attaining enduring health and wealth. All our desires are getting fulfilled. So one of the things that the Lokic family will do is disinherit you if you go to BKs. And there's quite a few people have experienced this. Um, but Baba says, anyway, whatever they say they can give you is perishable and not going to come to you most likely. So you haven't lost anything. Their promises are empty and their threats are empty. Uh, sometimes if somebody threatens to disinherit you, it's to make you do what they want. Um, but they can't guarantee your health whereas Baba guarantees you 
enduring health and wealth. The father says sweet children now become soul conscious. When you explain even a little to someone with the power of yoga, your arrow will strike. Anyone who gets shot by your arrow loses consciousness. So first they lose consciousness, that means they drop their resistance because when people are talking to you, they have um, an attitude, a little bit adversarial attitude. But when you're speaking to them in yoga, this adversarial attitude falls away and they become much more open to what you're saying. So this is what that's meant by losing consciousness. So they lose consciousness, they drop their resistance, and then they become babas. They get it. They remember the father with a lot of love, and the father also feels that pull. Anyone who remembers Baba, Baba feels it and gives a response. Some of you don't remember him at all, so Baba feels mercy. Nevertheless, he would say, children, may you progress. Claim a high number. The higher the status you claim, the closer you will come and you will receive limitless prosperity. Only the one father is the purifier. Therefore, remember the one father. And not just the one father, but also remember the sweet home. And not just the sweet home, but you also want all the treasures and property. Therefore, remember the sweet land of heaven. So three things. The father, the home, and the world of the golden age. You must definitely become pure. Remain introverted as much as possible. Do not chatter too much. Stay in silence. The Father gives you teachings. Sweet children, do not create disturbance. While living at home with your families, stay in peace. Be introverted. Speak sweetly. Do not cause harm to anyone. Do not get angry. If you do get angry, you will not be able to stay in remembrance. The father is so sweet, and so he explains. Do not let your intellects get caught up in circumstances and rationalize your displeasure. Do not be externalized, be introspective. The Father is so lovely and pure. He is making you children as pure as himself. So the more you remember the Father, the more lovable and loving you will become. Deities were so lovable that even now people worship their inanimate images. The Father says children become as lovable once again. Do not remember bodily beings or objects at the end. Remember the Father with so much love that while sitting in remembrance, tears of love are flowing. Baba, sweet Baba, I have attained everything from you, Baba. You are making me so lovable. Souls become lovable. The Father is extremely loving and pure, and you too must become as pure. Remember the Father with a lot of love. Baba, no one but you should come to my mind. No one is as lovable as the Father. Each of you becomes a lover of the Beloved. Remember the Father a great deal. 
Baba has told you that a physical lover and beloved don't live together. They see one another once and fall in love. The father says, sweet children, constantly remember me alone and the boat of your life will go across. We have so much love for the sweet father through whom we become like diamonds. Remember the father with such love that it creates goosebumps. Remove any character defects and become pure diamonds. If there is a flaw, it reduces your value. Become valuable diamonds. Remembrance of the Father should pursue you. Do not forget him, but his remembrance should engulf you. When you say Baba Baba, you should feel that coolness inside you. You receive a huge inheritance from the Father. You children are now establishing your deity kingdom. Everyone is making effort. And those who strive more receive a greater reward. This is a law. Establishment is taking place. You may call it a deity kingdom or a garden. Flowers in a garden are number wise. Some orchards give very good fruit, whereas others give less. It is the same here. You are becoming as sweet and fragrant as you were in the previous cycle. Number wise, according to your effort. There is a variety of flowers. You children have faith that you are becoming masters of heaven through the unlimited father. Great happiness is experienced about becoming the masters of heaven. The father is sitting here looking at you. The master's eye is on his home, the family home. He sees the virtues and defects of each of you, and you also know this. This is why Baba says, write down your weaknesses. No one has yet become perfect, and yes, you do have to become that. You achieve this every cycle. The father explains, the main weakness is body consciousness. Body consciousness troubles you and prevents you from developing your stage. You must forget your body. You will shed these old bodies and return home. So in this sense, body consciousness is really arrogance. Um, when you have arrogance, you say, I am this and I am that, and therefore you give it to people some hard time. But you will die, so... What are you talking about? Forget your body. You will shed those old bodies and return home. Cultivate divine virtues before you leave. You have to go without flaws. You are becoming diamonds and you know what flaws you have. The flaws in physical diamonds cannot be removed because they are objects. Those flaws have to be cut out. You are living diamonds, and so you can completely remove any flaws you have and become flawless by the end. If you do not remove your flaws, it will reduce your value. Because you are living, you can remove those flaws. Very interesting, the difference between a living diamond and a physical diamond. You can't do anything to change the characteristics of a physical diamond, but a spiritual diamond is altered 
by this resonance of remembrance. So you can't change. Acha. To the sweetest, beloved, long lost and now found children, love, remembrance and good morning from the mother, the father, Bab Dada, and the spiritual father says namaste to the spiritual children and the spiritual children say namaste to the spiritual father. So the essence for dharana, remain introverted and at peace as much as possible and avoid much chatter. Do not create disturbances, speak sweetly. Do not harm anyone or get angry. Avoid being extroverted, which gets you caught up in circumstances. To become complete, check yourself rigorously to discern your weaknesses. As a detached observer, check your behavior. Create methods to neutralize negative compulsions. And the blessing, may you be a Purushottam soul, the elevated soul, and victorious over adversities from nature. Brahman souls are Purushottam, that means deities. And nature is the servant of such souls. Nature cannot distress Purushottam souls. So check. Does any upheaval of nature overwhelm you? Does nature affect you such that you cannot get your needs met? Like it's hot or cold or some external difficulties or you have sickness and don't get medicine, can you handle it? The needs of yogi souls who experiment and engage in spiritual practice are automatically met. The facilities are not the basis of their spiritual practice, but their spiritual practice ensures that their needs will get met. This is an amazing phenomenon. The slogan, to have knowledge means to experience it, not just theoretical, but you, you experience it um, internally, um, mentally, emotionally. Uh, you know what it is from deep within. And then you can make others also experience it. Om Shanti. With the Avyakt silence, experience the double light angelic stage. Consider yourself to be double light and continue to do service. As much as you are light in the service you do, accordingly, you will fly and make others fly. To be double light while doing service, stay in remembrance while doing service and you will be successful. No matter how noisy or tamagoni the atmosphere, use the power of silence to finish your reaction to it by stabilizing in the stage of being proactive. With this elevated stage, you will always experience ease. Om Shanti. Now that's the Murli of today, and let us see what um, what points we will we will um, raise. Om Shanti, Sister Rose. Om Shanti, Sister Denise. <laughs> what a wonderful morning, <clears throat> keeping us in ecstasy. <laughs> this, is Denise, um, this is a comment from Vanji. Mm. He said, uh, the way Sister Denise 
is reading the Murli is like a in a meditative state. <clears throat> and listening to it, she said that she can feel the depth of love for the Murli. Yeah, well, it is um, it is the case, yeah. And, you know, the Murli is the foundation of uh, our meditation, so... So it makes sense to um, to be meditative while going along with the Murli. It's music after all, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> the flute. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, the word sweet came up so many times. Um, and yes, you explained a bit about it. That the opposite to it is bitter. Mm. And uh, the word sweet was used to describe many things. Uh, sweet father, sweet children, uh, sweet kingdom, uh, sweet deities. Sweet home. Uh, <laughs> sweet home. Yeah. I remember uh, many years ago, we asked Didi Nirmala, what, what does being sweet mean? Mm. And her answer was that uh, it's being the same inside and outside. What a good answer. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, because the worst thing in many ways, uh, I think, the worst thing is betrayal. Uh, when somebody is um, doing something different internally and pretending to be something external and then eventually you find out and ooh, that's not nice, right? Mm -hmm. So when Baba says to us, be sweet, um, exactly what is the, what is the uh, image or, or what is the feel? Well, as you're asking that, what's coming to my mind is this word real, you know. Uh, and I think the same inside and outside is like being real. And if you're for real, that's like really good. Uh, because so often people put on an act and uh, they're insincere and it's not uh, what it, it presents itself as so sweet uh i think also sweet is a vibration and if you're something different inside and outside there'd be some kind of a vibration that corresponds to that uh, which will make you suspicious there's something not right here but if you are um absolutely in tune with yourself and your inside and your outside match. That's very harmonious. That's a very beautiful vibration. Um, and you would be trustworthy. I think people trust someone with that kind of vibration. But, but um, sometimes, though, because we are not yet deities, so we are... Uh, working a work in progress and so what is inside is not yet perfect therefore in trying to project myself as sweet a lot of things are actually being suppressed or denied and yes in terms of vibrations this can be felt well, I think that your expression, trying to project ourselves as sweet, is the key here. Um, and a part of that has to do with self-doubt, you see, because as far as he's concerned, you're already sweet, and all you have to do is be yourself. But, um, you know, life on Earth has created all sorts of troubles and distortions, disturbances, and so we have completely lost touch with our inner core, which is, by definition, very sweet. And so when we try and be something which we actually are, but which we're not in contact with, then it looks really fake. And uh, I think also uh, go, goes back to this idea that, that there's a lot of people who feel 
um, that they're not okay and that they uh, they get a lot of feedback about this is not right and that's not right and so on and so forth. And so you're all very distorted from your essence when that's going on. And so, so I think when he says, you know, this is easy, it's like as soon as you connect with your essence and be that, then it's so automatic. But this, this effect of conditioning, the effect of trauma, the effect of all the things that we react against, um, they take over, you see, and that's very tricky. So I think the meditation where you're just resonating with Baba is probably the good way to return back to your essential self, your original resonance of what you are, which is definitely harmonious, definitely sweet. Mm. I like the way you um, describe remembrance of Baba is actually to be in his resonance to be, to, uh, as you said, to allow his influence to, to be in that influence, to be under that influence. And then slowly, slowly, it's going to change me. It does. And the problem is being extroverted. You know, he says, don't be extroverted. But when we're extroverted, well, that means when we're living on the um, surface of our face, uh, whatever is going on is going to come right in and that becomes an influence. So you have to create a barrier uh, so that you can be you uh, regardless of what's going on, trying to invade your inner space. Mm. That's a strong state. Mm. And that is that is actually the state that one needs to pay attention to. Yeah, not easy. Yeah, not easy. <laughs> so Baba also talk about uh, flaws, uh, character defects, um, negative compulsions. Uh, <laughs> in dealing with all of this, uh, the method that Baba gave was to remember him, uh, to remember the home, in fact, to only have him in my mind. And again, um, hearing, listening to this, it does sound easy, but I think in reality, it is not as easy as we are also overwhelmed with a lot of distractions. Um, the effect of these traumas, the effect of this um, negative emotions well exactly because of um our, our negative compulsions are provoked by some something we see or hear or hear about or feel you see so it's all to do with operating from the outside uh of the face um, and and that's what he means by externalized. You see, so when you you're living on the inside of your face, and you're really looking at everything that's going on as a kind of multi-channel TV show, um, you you use various different techniques for creating a distance between you and what's going on around you. But the problem is, it invades and it gets through your defenses and. Um, I mean, you don't want to be uh, uh, like put yourself in inside of Fort Knox and and close out the world. That's not reasonable. That's not psychologically healthy at all. But I think it's to do with how strong you are and how stable you are and how fast you are. You know, there is this expression "tivra purusharat," which people always say is intense effort, but Tibra actually means fast. So if you're fast, you can be faster than the sense perception that comes so that you can intercept it. It's a bit like in, um, in the war in the Middle East, there are these systems uh, for intercepting the guided missiles. And now they have 
hypersonic missiles, which means that they're going faster than the speed of sound. So your interception system has to be even faster. And that's exactly what we are experiencing in our lives, that things want to come in, they come in out of nowhere and you're just not um, prepared for it so they get through. Uh, and and I think Baba is asking us to, um, to understand, to figure out how your um, intensified stage of yoga functions as a natural intercept to things that want to come in and explode your peace of mind. So mm. it's or <laughs> yeah. I remember many years ago you showed us a video of a samurai mm. uh, was blindfolded and was able to cut through the bullet that was being shot at I don't know how many distance uh, from him. <laughs> Yeah, so a hundred feet or so. Yeah, this is um, a very, very good example, and um, uh, and this is why you know this martial arts is so uh, relevant uh, as a metaphor for what we do because in martial arts you see things coming by a different sense perception than eyes. Uh, you have eyes in the back of your head, as it were. That means your mind is um, detecting everything independently of your sense perception because your mind is much faster than sense perception. And so we are training ourselves to be to be that. And that's why he talks about experimenting. Uh, and so we need to think about that. So again, um, the way you define introversion uh, to be to operate inside my face is again a very good image, and it it somehow makes the word introversion clearer in understanding what it is. Well, the Hindi word, you know, is antarmukhi. So antarmukhi literally means that you are operating from the inside of your face. So that's why I put it like that. Because introversion actually means turned within. and um, But operating on the inside of your face is like much more uh, uh, a clear kind of instruction, you can say. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sister Denise, another theme that is that uh, was running through this Merli is the concept of safety, being safe, uh, being secure, uh, being protected. And the way that Baba was um, suggesting is to hand over everything to the Yagya, to him, and in return, Baba will, Baba will protect me. Hmm. Is that right? Yes. And it also doesn't mean just physically handing over everything because he also talks about the two different kinds of people. There's some which are dedicated, so they do hand over everything and so on, but it's not so many like that. The real thing he wants us to be able to do is be trustees. That means you do not, um, well, you, you operate as if everything you have is his, which means you operate according to his um, systems, his laws, his ways of doing things. And I think that's much better because if you just hand over everything to the Yagya, then what you do is you expect the Yagya to look after you and do this and that. And you still mm -hmm. assume that you have the right to do whatever you want. And then you stop having this sense of being a trustee. And Daddy Jang, he used to talk a lot about how Brahma Baba was an excellent trustee, that he would use the things, he would work with the people, never exploit, never abuse, always interact with and, um, you know, uh, organize the service and whatever um, as a trustee. So you're a trustee of people's feelings, you're a trustee of their heart, you're a trustee of the stuff, you're a trustee of 
your perceptions of what's going on in the drama, all of these things. So I think um, this is a very, very good way to to develop that um, that safety. And you see, when everything is babas, um, I've had so many experiences when uh, you you receive an intuition, a touching, something which lets you know um, what is dangerous, uh, where to go, where not to go, in, in all sorts of situations. Um, because when you're connected with Baba, just a tiny little resonance will let you know, okay, this is something to pay attention to. Otherwise, you're just operating like, uh, I don't know, thick, you know, like not refined, not sens insensitive. You see, we have to be sensitive to him because especially now, uh, there's no Sakar Baba, there's no Avyak Babdara. You have to be in that refined state in order to pick up the signals. And when you're totally his and operating everything the way he has said, uh, it's very, very easy to pick up the signals. So being in this state, um, able to pick up his signals, it means that, uh, because again, um, settlement is going on as we speak. Mm -hmm. So so how do these things reconcile with each other? Well, when you have some karmic account to settle, you also need a signal to let you know, okay, what's going on as settlement of karma? Because uh, when something happens, you have to be able to identify what's going on. Is this a karmic account? Is this an interference? Is this an obstacle? Is it somebody doing something bad to you? Is it um, you're not paying attention? Is it just drama? you know, some kind of destined thing, you need to be able to identify it so that you can respond to it according to what it is. Because if we misinterpret what's going on, we will respond inappropriately and it will not work out. So it's really like that. And you see, yeah, when there's a karmic account going on, well, you just have to settle it and you have to endure. So they have to use your powers. And if it's somebody is trying to give you a hard time unnecessarily, it's not a karmic account, it's a, an attack, then you have to get it and, and defend yourself and, um, you know, create a situation where you know, that attacker is not able to get through to you. And that all is the power of discernment. Sister Denise, what about the cases of some B case, um, meeting accidents or getting killed. So oh, this is drama. Um, and there were many occasions in, um, in the early Yagya where these things would happen. And um, sometimes Baba would even give an indication in advance, you know, that something, something is going to happen. And then it did happen. And then uh, Baba will say, well, this is drama, you know, it's a destiny. Uh, you had to break your arm or you had to, I mean, it, it didn't necessarily happen say, oh, you had to get killed. But when somebody dies, um, it's because their part in drama is finished and they have another part which is waiting. And, uh, it, it is possible to get killed by an accident or a, um, uh, I don't know how many Brahmins get shot, but I mean, on one hand, when you're in a, a dangerous situation or a war situation, uh, there is something that he also says that you become such a bright light that whoever is an attacker, they get afraid. And we have actually many examples of people in serious danger from uh, muggings or from kidnappings or from somebody who wants to assassinate. But they, and this happened to Brahma Baba himself, an assassin was sent to assassinate him, a, a contract killer. And um, 
and Brahma Baba was experienced by that contract killer as a blindingly bright light, and he became afraid and fell at his feet and confessed and all these things. And, um, and so he was protected. But all of this is to do with the vibrations of your spiritual, the quality of your spiritual practice. And when it's really high and good, uh, then it can take the form of whatever is needed to protect you in case of danger. But that requires a pretty good level of yoga. <laughs> I don't know if you still remember, Sister Denise, but many years ago um, in here, we we encountered a situation where a, a BK was shot and killed and um we in after so many days we actually had a kind of a online class with you um, to to ask you about you know like what happened why did it happen to a bk and that was my first time hearing you say don't be body conscious about violence okay yeah. Because and, this is a violent world. Well, it is, yeah. And and there are a lot of violence happens. Um, you know, and, and the, there, are, there are times when, you know, somebody will ask me a question, I'll say something. I won't remember what I said. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, we remember. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, there have been some some occasions, yeah. Um, and you have to die of something mm -hmm. when it's your time. It's your time. Okay. Uh, I noticed that um, the word happiness that was used in the Murli, you often retranslate it into prosperity, like a world of happiness is a world of prosperity or um, limitless happiness is limitless prosperity. Well, because there are these two words. One is cushy, which is really the emotion of happiness or joy. And then suk is a condition. It means you have money, you have good relationships, you have good health. That is suk. Mm -hmm. So it's happy because of those things. And, and so I always make a distinction because many BKs think that they should be in a, a state of internally experiencing happiness and they keep this big smile on their face to prove that they're happy and it all looks terribly fake. And that's why um, I think if you use a word which is a, a word about an emotion, to apply to something which is a state that that's in, improper, in, inappropriate. So I change it because of that reason. Mm. Thanks for that. Yeah. We have to interpret these things in a doable manner. Another word that I think uh, was not really translated in the right way, I think, is the word um, when in the Murli, Baba said, you are remembrance of Baba should harass you. And oh, I was thinking even without knowing him, be, I think this is really not the right word. So I'm curious, uh, what was the word, Sister Denise? Oh, I can't remember offhand the Hindi word, but it was... <laughs> It was like it should um, it should run after you. It should uh, you sh so I I put it as um, it should overwhelm you. It should something like that. But harassment is a negative word, and um, remembrance is not going to chase after you and and shoot you or uh, uh, knock you over or uh, give you any any kind of harassment. You see. So I thought, no, I have to find a much better word um, than that. And um, you see, uh, a lot of words are used which have a load on them. 
So you can have a load which is negative in one language and you translate that word into another language and it has a positive load on it uh, because of the way it's used. And so whenever you translate, you have to uh, use, like in French, they say le mot juste, and that's uh, the appropriate word. So just because the dictionary says you can translate this word by this word, it may or may not be appropriate. And so you have to really translate the meaning. And uh, a translator has to deal with this thesaurus and look at all the million different possibilities for this word and really think about what what does Baba mean when he says this and then find a word that corresponds to the meaning. Because otherwise the person who's studying it will not know <laughs> what to think. Another word that again you define in a, another way is um, when you said perfect integrity. Mm -hmm. no, because, that, uh, when when um, people hear oh, you have to be perfect, mm -hmm. then what happens, it, it immediately triggers all the conditioning which says you're not good enough, you're not okay, you'll never make it, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, all of this stuff. And, um, and perfect is in the sort of, English-speaking culture, completely impossible. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and um, but if I if I say, well, perfect integrity, that is much easier for you to deal with uh, because that brings in your conscience. You see, and and if you are going against your conscience, you'll know. Um, but if you're perfect or not, that's somebody's opinion. You see. And so anybody can have the opinion that you're not okay, and that's their opinion. It doesn't mean you're not okay. It's just a way of giving you a put down. And so you have to intercept that problem. And so mm -hmm. I, I, I put it like that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so may I read some of the questions that are coming in now? Yeah. <clears throat> Please give some examples of how to be detached observer to see our defects but not feel guilty you must um, experiment in the particular situations that you're arriving at and when you are um, looking at yourself, you know, keeping your daily chart of remembrance. You're also looking at how you responded to various different things. So this kind of self-evaluation will give you real live circumstances and situations which apply to you in particular and not to anybody else. And um, those are your examples. And uh, they're not hypothetical, they're real. In a sense, it is also teaching us, he said, Denise, how to, um, how to do the inner work. Okay, again, this is a comment. Um, it's a lovely definition of trusteeship mm. that Sister Denise gave, because usually um, when this is being explained to us, it is associated with wealth, you know, being a trustee of our, our wealth. But to be a trustee of feelings, of stuff, of people's stuff, people's feelings, even perception of drama. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sister Denise, in, in this movie, I just noticed that there are a lot of don'ts. Mm -hmm. Like, don't create disturbances. Don't chatter too much. Don't get angry. Don't cause harm. Don't let bitter stones uh, fall from your <laughs> lips. <laughs> yeah. Are, are these from Shiv Baba? Brahma Baba. 
you know, Sheik Baba's uh, Shrimat is concepts. Mm -hmm. And what Brahma Baba deals with is behavior. And um, behavior is also very cultural. And um, that's the, the thing about religions <clears throat> and cultures is uh, the, the, a lot of it has to do with raising the young. And so uh, when Baba was teaching, you know, a lot of these people were young or teenagers or, you know, you have to keep them in line and all of this stuff. And so, uh, but, you know, <laughs> we're not all children physically. And, um, of course, uh, when he's saying do's and don'ts, you you have uh, absolute right to, to see, are you doing it? Are you not doing it? Um, do you agree with it? Um, so this is... This is a, a cultural thing and a behavioral thing. And it's also to do with the time period, you know, in, in uh, the 1920s and 30s. So mentality about that and the values and so on were different than what they are now. And um, people always tell me, oh, talk to us about universal values. Values and universal do not go together. There is no such thing. As a universal value you can have a universal virtue but values are all to do with one two three four five six and um, it's connected with the time period um, the politics the caste the, all these various different human things so and their different opinions about what's good and bad which yeah. nothing to do with karma philosophy yeah. Well, people don't make those distinctions, but I, I do. As uh, we can see, values actually differ uh, cult culture to culture uh, according to, yes, time period. Do not rationalize your dis displeasure. <laughs> uh, well, this is uh, the thing, okay? Something... Uh, causes you displeasure you don't approve of it you don't like it whatever and you say they are wrong in your mind and um, and then you do something about it uh, thinking that you are right that's called rationalizing your displeasure mm -hmm. and um, you don't necessarily have a right to impose your attitudes about something on other people because who are you it's not your right, but people assume that it is their right and they cross over certain boundaries. So that is a breach of Mariada. <laughs> is is that, of, although it's not in the Murli today, but is that what Baba means when he says sometimes in other Murlis, do not take the law in, into your own hands? Um, yeah, well, that that's a very strong version of it where you start, um, you know, punishing people and this and that, which is really, you know, not your right. Um, but this is uh, where people start to um, make comments about other people and um, uh, assume that they are, that they have a right to... Um, you know, manage other people's behavior because, and all of this is arrogance, you see. And so I say, no, 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 don't give yourself that right. Mm. No, that's body consciousness. Because all souls are the same age and everybody's playing their predestined role. So you just don't have that right. But it all comes from the uh, Iron Age uh, world of people who think that they have all sorts of rights that they actually don't, and then they uh, um, import that into BK and say, this is Srimak, but it's not. Mm. You get that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, let me read again. 
asking you to elaborate. What does a trustee, being in a family and the people inside that house, so what does a trustee mean in this context? Well, again, it's like asking me for an example. It depends on the details of the family. There is no fixed rules that you can make generalizations about this stuff. So again, I would take you to the power of discernment and you figure it out, you see, because it depends what's your position in the family, what's going on in the family, how far that family is dysfunctional, et cetera, et cetera. And without all those details, you cannot um, give an answer. And again, um, <clears throat> to listen to how you explained you know, trusteeship a while ago, um, I think it will be helpful for the one who asked. Okay, mm, good, yeah. This is from the 18th January, Murli. Mm. Uh, there may be upheaval of the sense organs, but your internal state should be nothing new. Upheavals of the sense organs, you could you have to figure out exactly what kind of upheaval of the sense organs you're thinking about. And nothing new. Um, well, uh, this, this expression was famously used by Dadi Prakashmani. This was her response when uh, Brahma Baba left the body. Nothing new. That means it was a huge shock for everybody. But uh, she applied this aphorism, nothing new, uh, to calm everyone down, calm everything down. Because, you see, he had said, I will be with you till the end. And then he left. And then they thought, oh, my God, he's gone and we're still here. What's happened? What does this mean? And then in the Avyakt Murli, he took it up and he said, no, I, I'm still with you. I've just changed my station and I've gone to the Avyakt world. And you see, there are many things that happen which cause shock. And shock could be one interpretation of upheaval of the senses. And um, so when something very shocking happens, uh, then you can say nothing new, which means that you're um, applying the knowledge of drama being predestined so that uh, even though it shocks you, uh, at the same time, immediately remind yourself that it is destined, so it's okay. Because when people get a shock, the first answer is no, let this not be true. I do not wish that this event should have happened. Uh, make a chair go take the camera back and reshoot the scene, you know, <laughs> with a different. A different thing. No, these scenes are only shot once, and um, and so it's really to apply the knowledge of drama. Mm -hmm. Sister Denise, uh, one last question from the Facebook. Mm. Uh, this may not be related to the, to today's Murli, but I would like to understand how I can manage this dilemma of my being very proactive and raising certain areas that need attention or need to be done even outside of my area of task or concern in service. Is that an attitude of I and mine, uh, feeling responsible for a service? And does doing this prevent Baba Karan Karavan Heart to enter into the picture? <laughs> no, well... <laughs> If you want to do something which is not your responsibility, it means you're treading on somebody else's toes. And so you have to be a little bit more um, wise about your how you handle things. And you may make a comment, you may offer a suggestion, uh, but it, you know, you can't just be a control freak. That's not people don't appreciate that, and that's really basically what that is. And you see, when service is being done, what is service, you know? It's really to keep you occupied. And so you're making your fortune, somebody else is making their fortune, 
Um, and sometimes you lose sight of that and you think you have to control everything and everyone. There's a lot of people who do that, but um, uh, that that's um, not necessary. It creates disharmony. Mm. And it doesn't make any difference anyway. Mm. So it's better to keep harmony. <laughs> That's why um, Baba said regarding this that if there is like disharmony or conflict that resulted in service, then it is really not service. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. So thank you so much, Sister Denise. I'm taking with me again this, this um, idea of being under the the influence of Baba or being in his resonance. And, and for me, again, that is like easier to manage than to just simply say, remember me. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's absolutely right. So that's good. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank so you so much. Thank you, everyone, for joining so, Sister Denise, let us end the session with a silence. Mm -hmm.